And yet Herman Cain supported Mitt Romney for president in 2008. He looked at this plastic man who will say whatever he thinks the boobs want him to say to get elected. And Herman Cain thought, that's my man. That should, red flags ought to be going up right about there. Or how about TARP? He supported the whole bailout regime of 2008. He told us this was good economics. We got to get rid of all these free market purists, he called them. He said the Bush administration was giving us good information about the financial crisis, and so we needed this program. Well, at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you a resource page I've assembled where I can link to some articles that back up the things I'm saying. And I'm going to link you to David Stockman, formerly of the Reagan administration, and his own evaluation of TARP, which he more or less describes as one of the worst public policy atrocities of recent decades. Or then Afghanistan. We're told that Herman Cain can't tell us what his Afghanistan policy will be until he takes office. Well, you know, that's like a teensy-weensy bit of a problem there. Or what about the Patriot Act? We're told by Herman Cain that 90% of the Patriot Act is right on. And that the other 10%, he can't actually delineate to us what that is, what provisions would be contained in that 10%. But don't worry, he's going to more or less side with the Patriot Act because given that 90% of it is good, we got to do what we got to do. Well, this is an offense against the Constitution. It's, a, it's an offense against American traditions. And on my resource page, I'll link you to Bruce Fine, also of the Reagan administration, telling the truth about the Patriot Act. Or the economy. In 2005 and 6, we were told by Cain that there's no housing bubble. The media just made this up because it doesn't like Republicans. And in, as late as 2006 and then beyond, he's telling us that the economy's fine, you know, the statistics look great, this is uh, just a media fabrication. This was what we got, and I, I personally think there are plenty of people like this in Washington already who are completely clueless about the condition of the economy, as practically all the candidates in 2008 even had been. And then finally, we could talk about the Federal Reserve. Uh, Herman Cain uh, headed the Federal Reserve of Kansas City and has flip-flopped on the issue of whether the Fed ought to be audited, but he's argued that, well, there's no need to audit the Fed. You're not going to find anything. Well, that just goes to show he doesn't even understand the question. It's not like we're looking to audit the Fed to see if Ben Bernanke has been printing up money and using it to go on vacation to the Bahamas. The issue is there are a lot of unanswered questions that are very specific about how the Fed handled the financial crisis. We want answers to those questions, and we can get them with an audit. So in summary, why would we rush to support this guy, whom we know very little about, and what we do know about him seems to run counter to what the Tea Party is supposed to be standing for, if they're not just going to be a another flash in the pan nothing. Why do we flock to this guy when we've got a man who's got a 30-year consistent track record, who has supported the ideas of freedom in good times and bad, regardless of what it has meant for his personal popularity, and that, of course, is Ron Paul. Now, for my resource page, where you can read more about these topics, check out tomwoods.com slash Kane. And for more videos, make sure and subscribe to the channel at youtube.com slash tomwoodstv. Thanks for listening.